Hello everyone. I'm back again with you to read 20 and 10 and we are about to read chapter 3 entitled The Cave. But before we do so, let's touch base about chapter 2. So we've known along that Henry is smart. Janet, the narrator, tells us that he's smart. He's clever. He's quick thinking. But we learn in chapter 2 that he's also generous and he's observant. He's very aware of the situation. And when I say that, I mean that when he gives Arthur his soup, he's the only child that's described to us who realizes how desperately hungry the boy next to him, Arthur, is. And he is also very perceptive when he realizes that Arthur is not going to just say, oh, sure, thanks for the soup, I'll take your soup, because a child who is desperately hungry, on the run, whose parents have been killed, would never dream of taking another person's food. That would be just beyond thinking. And so he, of course, says, oh, no, I can't take it. And Henry lies and says, I can't stand the stuff. So it's very perceptive. That's the only way Arthur would have eaten the soup is if Henry hadn't lied. And he also poured his soup into Arthur's bowl. So Arthur really had no choice but to eat him. And then when Arthur tries to pay him back, Henry doesn't want to accept it. He truly has a generous heart. He's caring. So he's observant. He's perceptive. He's caring. And he's still smart and clever. Also, we learned at the end that there was a little bit of foreshadowing because they hear a noise, they stop moving, and then later as they return to the house, Henry tells Janet, no, I think that was someone. So we now begin chapter 3, The Cave, page 31. Next day at recess time, as he went past me, Henry whispered, go up there and wait for me. Of course, I knew what he meant. And when no one was looking, I went around the house and raced up the hill. It was bright sunshine, and I was not afraid. I found the place with the triangular stone in midstream, and I sat down and waited. I was not going to open the safe without Henry. I waited and waited, and I began to feel a little uneasy. Once or twice, I thought I heard a noise. So I was much relieved when Henry came up. Arthur was with him. I brought him, said Henry. I think he should be in, in with us on this. And I was glad I liked Arthur. So we all three knelt, and Henry very carefully removed the slab. Without looking inside the safe, he said to Arthur, You have the first look. Arthur did. He did not say a word. What do you think of our safe, I asked. Isn't it a grand hiding place? Still, Arthur did not say a word. Take it out, Arthur, Henry said. After all, it was your treasure first. Arthur raised his head and looked at us. His face was all pinched as if he had closed it shut. And he said in a choking voice, there's nothing there. Nothing? Henry and I gasped and we bumped our heads trying to look into the hole, both of us at the same time. Arthur was right. There was nothing there. The piece of chocolate, our gold, was gone. Who could, started Henry, and then we three jumped because we heard the noise of stones kicked by footsteps, and I saw something blue behind a bush, and then it disappeared. There, there, catch her, I screamed. I knew at once. It was Denise. We all started in that direction, and sure enough, it was Denise, but though we ran as fast as we could, she was way ahead of us and she kept leaping like a goat, always out of reach. Suddenly she shrieked, moved her arms frantically, and disappeared as if swallowed by the earth. When all out of breath, we came to the spot where we had seen her last, she was nowhere. We looked and looked around, and then we started to call, Denise, Denise, don't hide, come out. We have got you, come on. From far away, we heard a tiny voice, come here and get me, I'm hurt. Where are you, we called, right here in the cave. The cave, we exclaimed, there's no cave. There is, said Denise's voice, right under that boulder where you stand. That's where I slipped and fell into the cave. We went all around trying to find the entrance to the cave, but we could not see anything. And all the while we could hear Denise sobbing underneath. It was Arthur who solved the riddle. At the bottom of the boulder, there was a crack. We had paid no attention to it because it was too small for anyone to go through it. But as a matter of fact, it could be done. 
That is what Arthur discovered. You only had to place yourself in a certain position, and if you did, your body fitted the bumps and angles of the crack, and you could slip through, which is what had to happen by accident to Denise. Arthur already had his legs through when Henry pulled him back, saying, Just a minute, listen. Denise, we are coming to your rescue under one condition. You give us back the treasure. If not, you can just stay down there and rot. Henry can be harsh sometimes. I promise, I promise, wailed Denise. Then Arthur went down. We heard him say, Isn't this something? Henry, come down. Is there room for me too? I called. Sure, said Arthur. So Henry and I slipped down the crack, and lo and behold, we found ourselves in a natural underground cave, very spacious with a dry, sandy floor. At least 15 people could have stood in that cave. It was such a marvelous discovery that we nearly forgot about Denise, who lay there whimpering. Arthur remembered first and went over to her. But Henry said, just a minute, Arthur, Denise, the treasure first. Denise gave Arthur the chocolate, and of course we could see that she had nibbled a little piece out of our gold, but it was fortunate that she had not swallowed it whole, so we did not say anything. Besides, she was badly frightened, and we were too excited about the cave. It's a marvelous place, commented Henry, looking around. We shouldn't say anything to Sister Gabriel. It has to be a secret. He looked down at Denise and seemed suddenly to make up his mind about something. Let's sit down and celebrate, he said. Let's all, the four of us, eat up the treasure now. Denise's eyes shone. Cross my heart, she said. I won't tell anyone about our cave, and I'm sorry. I really didn't want to eat the treasure all by myself. I wanted one lick. I haven't had any chocolate for so long. I just wanted a taste, one lick, like Janet had. Then we knew for sure that she had spied on us and that it had been her footsteps we had heard the evening before, and I knew that she had wanted that lick so badly, not only because, like the rest of us, she had not tasted chocolate for so long, but also because I had had one lick, and she was jealous that Henry had shared the gold with me. But I didn't say anything, because she was truly sorry, and she was hurt. And also, I kept thinking that if Henry had chosen her instead of me, I would have been so mad that I might have done worse than Denise did. Arthur summed up everything nicely. Let us all be friends. We shook hands, and the four of us ate the treasure very, very slowly, one tiny bit each in turn. Then Arthur went up again to see if the coast was clear. Henry took Denise by the shoulders and I by the feet, and we lifted her through the crack. Arthur grabbed her and pulled her out, and then I hoisted myself through. Henry came up last. Denise said she could not walk, and we were very annoyed because it meant we would have to carry her and Sister Gabriel would discover what had happened. Henry became quite cross. You would spoil our plan, wouldn't you? He told Denise reproachfully. Helpless, always helpless, one way or another. I cannot stand a girl who... But Arthur put himself between them and said very gently to Denise, though I could see he too was annoyed, Just try to put your foot down. Lean on me. Just try. I can't, wailed Denise. Just try, Arthur went on, with that encouraging and at the same time very determined tone of voice. Here, Henry, help her on the other side. Now take it easy, Denise. We won't let you go. Denise did as Arthur told her, and suddenly her face brightened. She could put her foot down, and she found out that she could walk. She had been a little bruised and very frightened. We all came back to Beauvalon, very happy, and as we crossed the yard, Henry put a finger on his lips and said, Modus, which is the French word for mum. When they say mum, they don't mean mom. And in fact, in England, mum is your mom. There is an, there's an expression, mum's the word, which means mum's the word means not a word. Don't say a word. So that's what mum is. So in this chapter, we continue to see that Denise can be an annoying character. She's not very likable. 
And you know, in books, you have to have conflict, right? Now, in this book, we have a large conflict, the hiding of the Jewish children, the threat of the Nazis discovering, not having enough food. And then you have small conflicts. You have to have small and big conflicts. If all these children were perfect and everybody got along, it just wouldn't be as an interesting of a book. This is more realistic. Denise is an annoying kid, and she did what kids would do. She wanted the chocolate. The second thing that we have to realize is that books have plot twists. We learned about plot twists. So at the end of chapter two, we think, oh my gosh, somebody's following them. Could it be a Nazi? And then we realize it's just Denise. Does that mean that we're never going to have a Nazi discover them? I doubt it. What would be the point of the book? So what the author has done so well is she has first set the, the story for us where we think, oh, this is great. These children are going to have a home and be happy. Then we see they won't have enough food. Then we see the normal conflict between children. Then we have the foreshadowing of, oh my goodness, is somebody following them, discovering them? And then we have, it all works out. But let's talk about how again and again we've learned the author has a purpose for everything. She could have simply had Denise hide behind a bush and be discovered. She could have had Denise trip over a rock and get hurt and they have to help her. And they still decide to be friends. There must be a reason why Denise accidentally discovered a cave. So it has to have a reason or else there'd be no reason for her to do it. Think about what we've been told, what we can infer, that the cave is quite large. It could hold at least 15 people. So keep that in mind as you move forward in the book. We had a little bit of figurative language here in Chapter 3. We're getting to know the characters more. And we're really getting to know Arthur. When Arthur is introduced to us in chapter two, he just seems like this poor little boy, maybe not much of a personality. And we're discovering that Arthur is smart. He's smart. He's attentive. He's also caring. And he is also very adult. And I think that he's very adult because of how he manages Denise. And think about when he says to her, you can do it. He realizes she can walk. She just needs encouragement, but she needs encouragement with a firm voice. So what I would hope that you would infer from that is Henry, had, excuse me, Arthur has been on a long journey with these other children. Think that they had walked all night is what the man said that brought the children to Sister Gabriel. Think of how many times someone must have said to him, you can do it. You can keep going. You can keep walking. Don't give up. So he is repeating probably what was said to him on that long journey by foot to get to the house with Mother Gabriel and the other 20 children. So we're starting to form relationships, Arthur, Henry, Janet, and surprisingly, Denise. But like I said, you can't have this beautiful story where everyone's perfect and then have the threat of the Nazis. It would be an interesting story, but it's more interesting to have these little conflicts this book is so full of foreshadowing and opportunities to infer. So again, I'm really hoping you're enjoying this book. That means you're now ready to do your questions for chapter three and your paragraph prompt for chapter three. It turns out that chapter four is pretty long. I didn't realize it may be that chapter four is the only chapter we can do next week that it would might need to be broken up. Even if that happens, we would finish the book the following week. So we have two more weeks of 20 and 10. Again, I hope you're enjoying the book. I hope these videos are helping you. Have a great day.